Hello everyone, this is Mr. McMillan, and I'm here with uh, some example problems uh, that we did in class on uh, identifying types of angles in circles. Uh, so what we do here is we're going to determine the type of angle that's pictured in each circle below, and then use the words provided in the answer blank below to describe them, okay? So you have four different types. You have central, inscribed, interior, and exterior angles. Now what we're also going to do that's not in the directions, we're going to highlight the arcs that are associated with those angles, okay? So in some cases we'll be doing one arc, in some cases we'll be doing two. So let's look here. Number one, uh, the first thing we need to do is determine where our vertex is to determine the type of angle that we have. And if we look here where angle X is, or where X is, we see that we have a vertex there that's inside the circle, but not at the center. So if it's inside the circle and not at the center, then it is called an interior angle. So number one is the interior angle. Now when we look at the arcs that we need to use for an interior angle, we take uh, the ones that are opposite from the angle that we want to find. So in this case, we're looking at X. So this arc right here would be opposite from it. And then this one here would be opposite from it. So we're gonna highlight that. I'm gonna highlight it in blue. And those are the two arcs we would use in order to find what that angle is. So now let's look at number two. Number two, we see X here. And this time our vertex is in the center. The vertex is in the center. So what do you think that type of angle would be called? Well, if it's at the center point, then that means that it would be a central angle. And unlike with the interior angle where we use two, the only arc that we need for the central angle is the one that is right opposite from it. All right, number three. Number three, where is our vertex located? Well, X is out here and this vertex is outside the circle. Now, when we say that it's outside the circle, we say that it would be on the exterior of the circle. So this is an exterior angle. Now, just like the interior angles, the exterior angles will have two arcs associated with them. They'll have a big arc and a small arc. I'm going to do the large arc in, uh, I'm going to do the large arc in uh, orange and this small arc in blue. So our big arc here in orange and our small arc there. So this is our big arc. This is our small arc. Okay. All right, number four. <laughs> See if you can determine what type of angle that would be. So look at your vertex. Where is your vertex located? Your vertex is located outside the circle. Since it's located outside the circle, this would be an exterior angle. So that means we have two arcs here. We have a small arc, which is in blue here, and our big arc, which is here. And those are the two arcs we would use to determine what our exterior angle is. So now let's look at number five. Number five, where is the vertex for this angle located? Well, if we look here, we follow the angle and the vertex is here. It's right there on that point. And specifically, that point is on the circle. Now, if the point's on the circle, then it is neither in the interior or exterior, so it's not an interior or exterior angle. 
And of course, it's not at the center, so it's not a central angle. If it's on the circle, it would be called an inscribed angle. Okay. Now, when you inscribe something, you write it on an object. You write it on something. So that's called an inscription. So what you're doing here is inscribing that point onto the circle, and that's why it's called an inscribed angle. And like the central angle, an inscribed angle only has one arc that we want to use. All right, <clears throat> number six, <clears throat> what type of angle is number six? Well, the vertex is outside of the circle, so this would be an exterior angle. So an exterior angle needs two arcs. One is the large arc, which is here in orange, and the other is the small arc, which is there in blue. So we've got our big arc and our small arc there. <clears throat> number seven. <clears throat> number seven, we see that our vertex is inside the circle, but it's not at the center. So it cannot be a central angle, but it is inside the circle, so it would be an interior angle. And an interior angle needs two arcs, one that's opposite of X and then on the other side of it. So if you look here, you have this one that's opposite there, and then that's opposite there. So what type of angle would angle eight be? Angle eight, your vertex is here. So which one of the four different types of angles would it be? Well, your vertex is inside the circle, but it's not in the center. So that means that it's in the interior of it and it's an interior angle. So we need two arcs here and here because those are opposite of what we do or the angle that we're looking for. All right, number nine. Can you determine what type of angle that is? Well, the vertex is in the center. So if the vertex is in the center, we know that it must be a central angle. Okay, so the vertex is a central angle and it only uses the one arc that it intercepts. <clears throat> Number 10, what type of angle is number 10? In this one, you're gonna to have to look very carefully at because you have X here, which represents the angle, and your vertex is there on the circle. So since your vertex is on the circle, then it's an inscribed angle. Okay, it's an inscribed angle. And in this case, the inscribed angle is going to use that arc highlighted in blue because what it's going to do here, you uh, start your arc at the place where it starts, but the angle starts and where it ends. So you follow the straight lines and then do your curve that way. All right, so number 11, can you determine what type of angle that is? Well, you should see that the vertex is outside the circle. And since the vertex is outside the circle, this would be an exterior. I do apologize about the lights. This would be an exterior angle. So for an exterior angle, we need two arcs. Our large arc here in orange and our small arc there in blue. All right, so what about number 12? What type of angle would be number 12? Well, your vertex for your angle would be on the circle, 
And since your vertex is on the circle, that means we are dealing with an inscribed angle. So when we follow our lines here, our angle starts right there and it ends right here. And then we do it the way it's opening. So our inscribed arc, our intercepted arc there would be this arc right there. All right, number 13. <laughs> what type of angle is number 13? Well, number 13, the vertex is on the circle. When the vertex is on the circle, it's called an inscribed angle. Now you may also notice that this shape also has a central angle right here, but it had this angle labeled instead of this angle, so that's why it's inscribed. And in this case, the inscribed and central angle share the arc. Uh, number 14, uh, what type of angle is number 14? Well, if you look, your vertex is not at the center of the circle, but it is inside the circle. So that means that it's an interior angle. So an interior angle requires two different arcs, one that's, or both that are opposite from the angle itself. And so you have these two arcs here, which are associated with that interior angle. All right, what about number 15? What type of angle is number 15? Well, your vertex is outside the circle. So since your vertex is outside the circle, that means that this is an exterior angle. And for your exterior angle, you need a large arc and a small arc. Your large arc is here in orange and your small arc is there in blue. Number 16, what type of angle is number 16? Well, your vertex of your angle is on the circle. So if your vertex is on the circle, then that is an inscribed angle. <clears throat> and the arc that's associated with the inscribed angle is directly across from it. All right, number 17. Number 17, what type of angle is 17? Well, if you look at your vertex, your vertex is outside the circle, which means that it's an exterior angle. And an exterior angle, you need a large arc, which we're gonna highlight here in uh, orange, and a small arc, which is in blue. Number 18, what type of angle is in number 18? Well, you should see your vertex is inside the circle. <laughs> so if it's inside the circle, that means it's an interior angle, specifically because this one was not in the center. It wasn't located at the center. So the interior angle needs two arcs to find so it's associated with this arc here and this arc as well. All right, so what I want you to do, I want you to try numbers 19 through 24 on your own. Uh, see if you can determine what type of angles it's looking at and then come back. So on number 19, our vertex for number 19 is inside the circle. Since it's inside the circle, that means it's an interior angle. And the arcs that go along with it are directly opposite from the X above and below it. Number 20, our vertex is located on the edge of the circle because that's where X is. 
So this would be an inscribed angle. And your inscribed angle is going to have this arc here, which is also shared by the central angle that's there in number 20. Number 21, your vertex is located at the center of the circle. So your vertex, uh, with it being at the center, means that you have a central angle. And a central angle uses the arc that's directly across from it. Number 22, what type of angle is number 22? Well, your vertex is on the circle itself. So that means that this must be an inscribed angle. And an inscribed angle has only one arc associated with it, which would be here in blue. Number 23, what type of angle is it? The vertex is on the circle. So that means it's an inscribed angle. And in this case, your inscribed angle is associated with that part there. And yes, that one is made up of two pieces, but that's okay. And number 24, number 24, your vertex for where X is, is located at the center of the circle. So this is a central angle. And the arc it uses is right there. Okay, so that's how to identify the different types of uh, angles and circles. Hopefully that helped. Um, we're also going to just refresh ourselves on the formulas that we would use to determine what each angle or arc measure would be. So to find central angles and arcs, your central angle and arc are equal to one another. So your central angle and arc are equal to one another. <clears throat> now to find your inscribed angles and arcs, there's actually two formulas, one for the angle, one for the arc. So to find your angle, you take one half of what the arc measures. So one half of the arc is equal to your inscribed angle. So if your angle is half the length of the arc, then we know that the arc must be equal to twice what the angle is. So if your angle was 50, you would multiply it by 2 and you would get 100 for your arc. Now to find interior angles, in order to do that, our angle is equal to the two arcs added together, and then divided by two. So it's half the sum of the arcs. And then to find exterior angles, our angle is equal to the big arc minus the small arc divided by two. Okay. And we learned about those in other videos, and there will also be a, a video with the uh, example problems or with a worksheet that was assigned uh, a few lessons before. Okay. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope this video was helpful in determining the different types uh, of angles in circles. Um, you know, if you have any questions, please let me know, uh, and I do hope these videos. Uh, help you understand the material uh, better. Um, thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next video.